Andrew, if you don't know, he's the, the mastermind, the brains behind Vision PT. It's like basically the, uh, you're the personal training McDonald's. That's, I think that's a good way to sum it up. Uh, McDonald's is the leader in their, in their fran fast food franchise, and Andrew is dominating the personal training industry. I think it's a great interview because I think personal trainers aspire to one day have their own studio, get more studios, get more staff, and you're the king of the mountain right now. So I really want to know how you've done it. That's the most important thing. Sure. So take me back though, where you actually started. It was a, uh, became a fitness first club in Sylvania. Right. And uh, I basically grew up in, the, in a gym environment. Um, I was really passionate about sport my whole life as a young kid. And uh, basically thought, well, look, I, I went to school to play sport pretty much. Right. Uh, you know, those things you did between nine and three were pretty much recovery sessions for me. So needless to say, my grades at school weren't too crash hot. Mm -hmm. uh, so just decided, well, you know, I need to sort of pursue something to do with sport when I finished, but I really didn't know what at the time. And I played so many sports at school um, that I really was pretty unfocused at the time as to which way I was going to go. Because I, when I went through school, I was pretty much told what to do. I went to a private boys' school in Sydney, so my life was very much mapped out for me surrounding sport. Mm -hmm. When I left school low, I had really no idea what the hell I was going to do. Right. And um, I was really grateful that my parents had basically put me through my whole schooling. And I've been in a private school system. My mum worked pretty much to put me through the private school system. And I was really grateful for that. And I didn't want to have to rely on them. So I thought I'd go get a full-time job and I'd follow my mates into what they were doing. So, right. All sports um, oriented. Yeah, well it actually wasn't sports orientated. I um, went into the world of chartered accounting. And uh, oh, right, yeah. I worked in a chartered accounting firm for two years on a full-time basis and studied part-time, which uh, many people would know for me was the dark side of my life um, in working in, in, a, in an accounting firm. I was no good at it, and sometimes people get confused. They say, oh, geez, you must be good at accounting. Well, mate, I'm, I'm actually not good at all at accounting. But do you learn the systems? You must learn something from that. Yeah. You must be some good mate, I just learned about professionalism. Right. That was the biggest thing, and, um, and I realised that uh, after you know, being involved in a, in a small gym, actually, funny enough, I'd... The gym I used to go to when I was working as an accountant is literally about seven or eight doors up the road. And it no longer exists. Yeah. But um, you know, I sort of saw that it was actually a real sort of family orientated gym. But it was actually the I suppose the professionalism at the time wasn't really around in the industry. And it was uh, the heydays. It was still when Arnold Arnold was down the gyms, companies yeah. like you know, Leeds Hearts to aerobics, wasn't it? That's yeah. the time. Pretty much, mate. And I, I remember staying in the back of aerobics classes with my sister, and we did aerobics classes together when I was sort of moved from the gym gym floor, so I snuck in the back of an aerobics class to muck around and have some fun. And um, I was terrible, but you're right, mate. There were literally, there were um, the the long leotards, there was the G-string with the leg warmers. Yeah. That's what the instructors were pretty much wearing at the time, so <laughs> it wasn't all bad. <laughs> yeah. All right, so you started with that, and then... You, you stepped into a, you know, you stepped in. Of, you started obviously personal training then. Yeah, I went. I, I finished. Uh, I finished up my exercise. Uh, sorry, my uh, accounting course. When I did, I did, did that part time for two years, and I just realised that was no good for me. So I went and studied exercise science full time at, at the University of New South Wales. Yeah. And um, I just, I wanted to continue in, in income, I and mean, I killed it in the first couple of years in accounting. I paid fourteen and a half grand in my first year. Right. And sixteen and a half grand in the second year. So the two grand pay rise was huge. <laughs> you know, but then I was given the opportunity to work in a gym, so uh, down at Sylvania Physical, um, I was employed by Pete and Fiona Cosgrove uh, down oh, right. on, on the reception desk, yeah. uh, and that was awesome at, the, at that time, and I went through uni, um, you know, we were doing full-time uni, worked part-time on the reception desk and teaching circuit classes, uh, that was awesome for my first year, and, and then I moved into the aerobics room. And, uh, you know, and did your stuff in the aerobics, yeah. did my stuff in the aerobics, mate. I was on stage doing the stuff. I was hopeless at doing that, but because I got to know the members by working behind the reception, they accepted me. So that was, uh, I was really fortunate that I was able to so get So you just did the same aerobics routine time and time again? Mate, pretty much for the first, yeah. <laughs> I started with a thing called New Body. Right. Mate, it was, it was good. New Body was awesome for me because it was really slow. Yep. The music was slow, so I could keep up with it rather than doing the high energy stuff. And then I did some step, you know, basic step stuff, because again, the music was slow, so I was able to get myself coordinated. But that was really cool. And, uh, and then just worked on the gym floor part-time uh, from the second, uh, you know, years two and three of uni. And then after I'd finished my exercise science through, started as a PT in the club. Yeah. Yeah. And then you grew from there? And grew from there. Probably the, the biggest thing was my involvement with Les Mills. Okay. Um, at the end of 95, when Les Mills came across to New Zealand, uh, Pete and Fiona had the foresight to say that was going to be something pretty big. So we were like the second or third gym in Australia to get uh, body pump. Yep. And I uh, was fortunate enough to get um, in contact with the, um, 
a guy named Steve Renata, who's one of international partners, and he and I hit it off from the start. It was great, you know, similar rugby and triathlon backgrounds and that. And, yeah, we became mates and you know, I ended up uh, travelling the country um, you know, with him in the early times um, teaching instructors how to do body pump. Right. So I mean, it was really, my, it was a Les Mills influence, mate, that really made a difference for me. It sounds like the, the systems came from there, obviously accounts was bad, but I, I think you've got to have systems from yeah. there and come from system mate, professionals from there. I, I think the biggest thing I noticed was when I was travelling around the gyms doing Les Mills, I could see that there was no professionalism in the industry. I mean, sure, they were nice people and all the rest of it, but in terms of the actual standards, what I was used to in the, the professional world of accounting, like it was just chalk and it was just chalk and So chalk interesting. And so basically, you've gone from an industry that has the standards, that's been more established, way yeah. more established than fitness, bang, you put them straight into fitness. So that's, I think that's a really big key right there. Because oh, that was massive. Huge. You've huge. been around for 10 plus years, is that correct? Yeah, it's uh, August 99. August 99. When we started, yeah. yeah. And to get to where you are today, you've got 47, is that the count yeah. right now? So isn't yeah. it, if I put this up in a month, will it be 48 or what? No, not, probably not in a month, but um, right. we've got some growth plans for next year. Massive growth plans, yeah. I'm sure. So you've got 47 at the moment. And so I really want to talk about the struggles to get to 47. Because you see, you will see a lot of you know trainers out there that have a couple studios, yeah. they have one, they'll have two, they struggle with the second, they struggle with the first. Where there must be a limit to where you get to a stage, and you're doing everything by yourself, get to three or four or five, whatever it is, and then there's there's got to be a shift, there's got to be a change. Yeah. Where was the the growth point for you with the number of studios you had? I mean, the hardest one was going from one to two. Right. So that um, is the hardest. Oh, mate, no doubt, the hardest was one to two. It was, uh, it was about realizing how to provide a career path for the guys coming through. So in the early times, times we didn't we talked about franchising for like four or five years, if yeah. not longer. You know, I thought, I'm going to franchise, I'm going to franchise, like I'm sure so many trainers say, or, you know, I'm going to franchise. You it's know? the pinnacle, everyone wants to franchise, yeah. that's what they want to do. You know, but um, mate, it, was, it was a case of that you just don't go and franchise. Yeah. You know, you basically got to, you know, even from the systems, like, I never set up vision to franchise it. Right. I set up vision to provide systems that our trainers could use, and that's what I think a lot of people get confused by. They think I was actually always going to franchise. No, I, I got sick to death of when I was working in the club, um, which became Fitness First. Um, there was all these trainers speaking with different languages. Yep. So one trainer would be talking about the latest one set of failure training technique or overload course, principle, yeah, that. low carb diet, no yeah. carb diet. And I didn't like that because I just realised that my involvement with Les Mills was when everyone was going for a common goal and following a set structure, you became a team and everyone grew faster. Mm. So all I wanted to do was make sure that my trainers were all speaking the same language to get results for clients because a lot of clients won't get results. I think that's the know? biggest thing as well. I mean, obviously having a franchise of 47, you've got to be very clear on it's this way or, 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 or the highway. Yeah. Otherwise, you're exactly right. It gets wishy-washy. Yeah. and So all, all those systems were actually built not to for a franchise, uh, to franchise it per se. It was actually just to make sure that I had systems so that all the trainers, you know, we had 16 trainers down here at one time, yep. and, uh, you know, we had to make sure they were on the same page, yep, speaking sure. the same language. And as, as an... That evolved, we had all the great PT systems that were able to, you know, so the trainers could follow. The next struggle was to actually make sure that the business model was there mm. so that it was actually franchisable. And so I guess the hard thing and the, and the thing a lot of hours probably people don't see is the systems, creating these systems. Who yeah. created them? How did you create them? Mate, it was done literally when I, between the hours of, you know, nine and two in the morning. Nine and two. Yeah, you know, so oh, it was like, finish, yeah. you know, you finish your normal day and then your system day starts. You know, and that's what I did, did a set up late night at a computer. I still do all that sort of stuff, you know. Like I might leave here, but you know, I go home and sit on a computer all the right. in the morning, you know. That's right. And that's um, that's what I spent a lot of time doing in the early times was you know creating those systems myself. And you know, I really had a lot of support from uh, you know if, sort of a few of the key early trainers that I had. Yep. You know, they obviously contributed to the evolution of it. But um, I suppose that's me. I'm just the system sort of guy, and that's probably so your key systems. systems. Yeah, your, your IP is all about systems. Yeah. That's what, what makes you the systems. All. Absolutely. Yeah. So going those systems and going to the second studio then, yeah. do you own the second studio or did you actually No, it was actually it's franchised straight away. Straight away. I mean, really, I realised that unless I franchise Vision, Vision Karen Bar, which yep. is where we are today, the yep. first one, yep. mate, it was never going to survive mm. because I, I lost so many trainers because they, they came through and they wanted to have an opportunity to grow. So I was either they were going to grow with Vision or they were going to grow outside of Vision. Mm. And that was what happened. A lot of guys actually grew outside of Vision, so most of the competition around here are my former, former trainers. Former trainers, yeah. You know, um, you know so that was... Uh, that was and that was before you sort of read to franchise, just went out and did some stuff. Yeah, because they, 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 they was, we always talked about it. 
and then I realised that some of the key guys, as soon as we got say two or three away, and they were in, in the franchise, I had to make sure they were successful. You know, yeah. that was the key to it. They had, my early guys had to be successful. And so, say that first two, three, four, they're the ones you just put more time and focus on before you had that big growth spurt? Yeah, absolutely. Because I remember you had a few there and then all of a sudden, bang, next thing I know there's 47. Yeah, well it took us um, five and a half years to get to six studios. Okay. You know, so... So uh, five so and a half years to get to six studios, yeah. and then you had 41 in the other... And then in the, in the next five. Few, so the that, next that I think is key, and that's sort of leads me to what I want to talk about is focus. I mean, yeah. to, to have that big vision of, okay, I want whatever those, that number you want, and then knowing that that five and a half years is a struggle, it's the late nights, it's the stuff people don't see, yeah. it's probably being very stressed. From, from a financial point of view, like you know, we, the, the model was in the first few years of actually having a vision itself in Karen, but even though from an outsider's perspective, we were a national PT business of the year in 2003, yep. but we were almost broke. Yep. You know, because from a, from a results perspective, we knew how to get results, but mate, from a business model, we were, were terrible. You know, even even when we had like uh, from a, I spent my time pretty much working full time in the franchising side. Sure. But I was away. I was you know, carrying my studio. I was actually making the money. You know, I hardly made any money from the franchising for the first five years. So for five years with a franchise model, and that's that's where I believe. I mean, unless you go past that number, right? It's tough. Yeah. As you're telling, it's tough. Yeah. And then then you can start to actually get some results, but you got to stay focused. Yeah, absolutely. What? What do you get through to stay focused? Like, how do you continue to know that I'm doing it and I'm going to get to that number yeah. I want? Like, what, what what are your tricks? No, I think it's just okay. My the reason for starting Vision really franchising was to provide careers for people. Okay, and that's what it's been all about. I mean, I want to get want to get results, and so we've talked about our, what we're passionate about. The Vision, sure, that's getting decreasing diabetes and then providing careers for people. If I can't provide careers for people, I can't then decrease diabetes. Why are you so passionate about providing careers for people? Mate, because I've seen too many of my friends actually fall out of the industry and go back and having jobs they hated. Mm. But they're doing the stuff that I was doing for those first two years. Yeah, sure. You know, when I worked in a chartered accounting firm and I hated what I did. And then, you know, I went through uni and most of the guys I went through uni with are doing other things because they, they said, oh, there's no career in fitness. Mm -hmm. you, you can't have a career in fitness. You know, I saw the model actually working in a gym. You know, clubs are costing millions of dollars to set up. But there's no progression for people who are coming through as trainers. To continue through it. Yeah, so I thought, well, I just want to be able to do that. And when, when you see a trainer come into our network and then get grown, and then they have the opportunity to have their own studio, yep. to me that is awesome. I love that. Mm -hmm. That's what drives you. Yeah, absolutely. That's what